Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 158. So this is probably going to be at least one of the last uh, segments of our little cleanup. And in this one, we're going to cover the GUI. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new empty game object. And I'm just going to call this, uh, let's just call it HUD. And this is going to be holding the script that actually does all the GUI for us in our game. So I'm going to come down to my scripts, not my scenes, my scripts, and it's in the HUD folder. So HUD classes. Now there's the vital bar that we're using for our GUI textures, and we'll be incorporating that later into the my GUI script. But if you are still using textures and you want to keep using textures, uh, you can just work off of this here. This is the class you're going to be inheriting from to uh, create your stamina and your mana bars. So I'm just going to open up my GUI. And and here we go and of course I'm gonna to want to add it to my component menu so uh, where should we add this I'm just gonna make a new one down here called GUI and I'm just gonna throw it in there so I'm gonna come down about my class and we'll add component menu and I forgot to see on component And what we want to call it, and I believe it's hack and slash tutorial slash. I'm going to put it in a GUI folder and I'm just going to call it HUD. So I'll save that off. We'll go back into Unity, let it re recompile everything, and take a look. And there it is. So I'll select the new game object I made called HUD and I'm just going to add that to it now there we go so if we take a look over here it's looking for a skin and we've already created that I'm not actually going to cover any details on how to actually use a skin or how to set up your custom skins I actually have a tutorial already done for that and I believe it's tutorial 133 and unity actually has a fairly extensive uh, documentation on it uh, let's go down to the rest of the the uh, exposed variables. So we have the loop window height, button width and height, uh, the close button width and height. Uh, some of these can actually be close or set to private. I do have them set to be public uh, currently because we're working on them and I'm not quite done working with my GUI so I'm probably going to leave them exposed. But let's just start it up and see what happens. Now we notice right away we're getting a lot of warnings. We get the default look for our character panel in our inventory panel. And let's just go open up the little chest. Make sure I'm close enough. We'll click on it. And I'm getting a loot window, but there's actually nothing being shown in the loot window. So I'm going to hit this is where my close button is. If you actually want to see what this looks like uh, styled, I have a demo on the website. But let's just close this down. And just start looking over at some of these errors. Now we got over 32,000 of them, but that's just the same ones being repeated and over, over and over again. So let's just go down and take a look here. We're getting the first one, uh, inventory slot empty. It can't find that in the GUI style. So if we open it up, we're taking a look here. It's at line 281 in the function inventory window. And if you want to see how this, the logic behind how I was creating the script, obviously you can just go back and watch the tutorials. And we're getting that warning because we're calling a style that we're calling inventory slot empty. And we don't actually have that defined in our GUI style yet. So I'm going to go back into Unity and open it up. And I'm just going to go down to Custom. And we notice that it has a size of 1 already. And of course you can make you know as many as you want you know here's two you know uh, look at the documentation it's, pre it's pretty easy on how to use these but I'm just gonna go into the first one and I'm just gonna paste that name in there and I'm not gonna bother actually adding any graphics or playing around with any of the custom settings like I said I already have a tutorial on how to use your GUI styles and I'm just gonna start it back up and we'll see that we're no longer getting any warnings 
Now, if I go ahead and open up a chest, I'm not close enough. There we go. I'll probably get a few more here. That's fine. I'll just close it and let's just take a look. I'll go up to the top. And the first one it's looking for is the close button. So I'm actually going to cut and paste that and I'm going to come down to element one. And I'm just going to create that element or at least that style. And there should be one more inventory slot common. And I'll just do the exact same thing. I'll just cut and paste it. Now I'm actually going to expose these in the inspector for this script. Uh, you may not want yours called the exact same as mine. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, we'll expose it and you can call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to quickly start it back up and there's probably more. So let's just see if any more do pop up. I uh, wasn't close enough, so we'll open it back up. And that actually seems to be all of them. I thought I had more. Well, there, there's actually going to be more as we go along, but let's just take those three that we already have. And I'm going to come up to the top and expose them in the inspector. So I'm going to go right underneath the My GUI skin. And I'm just going to make some public strings. And I'm going to want an empty inventory slot one. So I'm just going to call this empty inventory slot. And let me see, I have a close button one. So I want the same style for all of my close buttons. So I'm just going to use the exact same one. So it's string close button. Style. If I spell it right, and I'm actually going to add style at the end of all of these just so it's a little more self explanatory. And the third one was inventory slot common. Now, if you haven't gone back and watched the tutorial series, the way I'm doing it is I have a different background for the different rarity of the items. And right now, I have three rarity of items I have my common item, I have my uncommon item, and I have my rare item. And I'm going to be creating an, a different uh, style for each one and basically the difference between the styles is the, the background But we'll go ahead and add that one Inventory slot com so we'll call up. We'll just stick to the same name So it's inventory slot common style And I'll just save these off I guess I'll just add my comments in here now the style name for an empty inventory slot. The style name for a close button. The style name for a common item and let's go in we'll take a look at the HUD this should get popped up here and I'm just actually going to cut and paste them in uh, let me see we'll just go back down to my style and I'm just going to cut and paste names there because this is what I've called these particular styles and like I said before you're free to call them whatever you want and the close button was I believe just close button Close window button. And the inventory common slot. There we go. So I'm going to start off with the inventory slot button and I'm just going to go through the script and I'm going to replace all instances of it with the actual variable name which I'll come up to the top and I'll just cut and paste so there's only two instances of it which is fine here's the first one and 
and I'll try to find the second one right here. And that's it. So I'll save that off and I'm going to go for the next one. The next one is called Close Window Button. And I'll just, what I call it at the top here, probably pretty close to the same. Close Button Style. Now there's probably only one instance of this. And there is. So I'm going to come up to the top. Same thing, cut and paste it in. And the last one. Inventory slot common style. This one might be in a few different spots. Yeah, it's only in two. That's good. So we'll find it and just replace it. And this is the last one. I'll save that off and I'm going to go into Unity and see if I have any errors. So we'll recompile. It doesn't look like we have any errors. Now I obviously haven't styled them so they're not going to look that nice but uh, let's go open a chest and make sure that it works. There we go. We did not get any errors. Now I do have an unassigned exception. Let's just take a look at that. So we're looking for the closed sound length. And if we don't have any sound attached to it, it can't get the length properly. So we're just going to go up above and just basically see if the closed sound exists. So if closed sound is equal to, I guess not equal to null. And then we'll do this. And of course this was supposed to be a small f. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the animation. Uh, let me see, we'll just set the temp timer to equal zero at the start. And then we'll come down here and say if close animation name does not equal basically an empty string, then we'll set its length there. So that should handle if uh, we haven't actually added any close animation or sound. So let's save that off and we'll go back to Unity. I do have an error. Uh, let's just take a look. And I forget to actually assign this. There we go. Now we'll head back into Unity, make sure there's no more errors. And let it recompile. And then we'll just hit play. And we'll run over to the little chest. I guess I could just delete that big chest. I'm not close enough. I should actually increase the range on my small chest. But you can just season it according to the models you're using. And there we go. Now you notice that the loop window itself is still empty. And uh, it actually is generating the items and trying to display them but you're going to have to play around with your GUI styles to get those set up right and then you're also going to have to create your item icons in your resources folder and tutorial 132 actually shows you how to create these icons and put them in there so I'm not going to go over that again so let's actually go back into model develop and I'm going to come down to our populate method which should just be up here now right here is where it's actually adding the items into the chest and if you actually want to see what the name of these items are that are being generated from our item generator script uh, you can just simply debug log them out and we'll just grab each item as it's generated so I'll just give it the index that it's at and I'm just gonna put its name out for now so I'll come back into unity I'm actually just gonna get rid of this big chest now and I'll move my small one over to where the other one was so I don't have to walk so far. And of course we have it set up that C closes your character panel, I close the inventory. And if we open it up, we'll see here that the actual items are being generated. 
So it made me a sword, sword, uh, sliffy, sliffy, sliffy. And I only actually have three items. So let's close it. And there's no more errors. And that should pretty much bring you all up to speed uh, with what we've done so far in the tutorial. Now I have not covered the day-night cycle because I haven't touched it since the last tutorial we did with it, which was incorporating it into our package. So just look for that tutorial on the list. It will be the last one in the day-night cycle. And I hope this helps everyone catch up to where we are uh, thus far in the series. I hope you enjoy the rest. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.